What's up, math fans? Today we're looking at tangents and secants, okay? And I would like you to understand that PC is considered a tangent segment because it goes from an external point to one point on the circle, does not go through the circle. If it extended, it would not go through the circle, it touches the circle only once, that's a tangent segment. Then PAB, which is here, PAB, is a secant. And a secant is a line that goes through a circle and intersects it twice, here and here. And hypothetically, it could keep going, but I only want the segment for today. Now, there's a relationship between these two. And the relationship is the tangent segment squared is equal to the entire secant segment times the external segment. What did I just say? PC squared equals the entire PB times PA times PA. And I don't recommend you memorize this formula because letters change, but understand the concept. Tangent squared equals entire secant times external secant. Let's look at numbers. 10 squared equals what? 20 is the entire thing times the outside, which is five. Obviously not drawn to scale. I don't have a scale, didn't use it. Okay, let's see. 100 equals 100. We are good, I proved my theory. Now we're gonna do it when you actually have to solve. So if I have to solve for x, I'm gonna be careful because I've made mistakes in the past. Let me see here. Tangent is six. So six squared equals the entire thing. Is it four? No, is it x? No, it's four plus x. The entire thing is four plus x, also known as x plus four. I prefer my x to go first. Not that there's anything wrong with the other way. No one's judging you. Okay, times the external segment, which is four, four. All right, now I wanna solve for x, so I'm gonna use my favorite property, which is a distributive property. Six squared is 36 equals four x plus 16. Am I good? Everyone's following? Great, thanks. Now, I wanna get x alone. So, since it's Sweater Fridays, I'm gonna share a joke that a student told me. He told me, if you wanna get x alone, buy it a drink. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract 16 on both sides. 36 minus 16 is 20, 20 equals 4x, and if I remember my math, then 20 divided by 4x equals, if you can see that, five. All right, now, uh, thank you very much for your silent applause, you guys at home. One more, see if you can do this on your own. If you can't, stick around, I'm gonna do it for you. We got my external segment, which is x plus eight. So I'm gonna write x plus eight. Oh, you're gonna love this one. This brings back a lot of algebra. x plus eight squared times the entire thing. You're probably not gonna see this uh, wiggly woggly on a test, but you should know it. So what is it? 12 and 15 together, that's 27. So 27 is the entire thing times the outside is 12. Okay, here we go. Now that I set up my formula, I wish I had a calculator or maybe someone in the audience could tell me what is 27 times 12? And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do x plus 8 squared. Do you remember how to do this from algebra? Because there's no, I haven't done a video on it yet. Well, actually I have. Um, if you could find it, I'm going to just step over here to my air calculator. I'm going to type 27 times 12. 27 times 12. 324. Okay, the magic is happening. Beautiful air calculator, I love it. X plus eight squared. I might have done a video a long time ago that said, how do you find the square of a binomial? You remember it? It's X plus eight times itself. When I do that, I'm gonna use something called FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. That gives me X squared plus eight X plus another eight X plus 64. This is all review from algebra. Equals 324 drops down. Combine like terms, x squared plus 16, x plus 64 equals 324. Ah, here is something that I haven't done in a long time. This is called a quadratic equation. I want this side to equal zero, so I'm gonna subtract 324, 324. I'm doing 64 minus 324. Let me go to my air calculator here, and I'm gonna guess that it's 260, but just to double check, beep, boop, beep, boop, bop, bop, negative 260 x squared plus 16x minus, what did I just say, 260 equals zero. 
Does this look familiar? Now you gotta factor it. Boom, boom, boom equals zero. <clears throat> I know an X and an X go here. I need numbers that multiply to 260 and add to 16. I'm gonna go with hmm, uh, 26 and 10. And the bigger number gets the middle sign. So that is a plus and that is a minus. I haven't done a video on how to solve from here, but if you took algebra last year, you remember something called a t-chart. T, the letter T, because it looks like an actual T. And in that T, you put x plus 26 equals 0, and x minus 10 equals 0. How do you get x alone? Buy it another drink. Also, subtract 26 on both sides. I hope you can see this, and if you can't, I'll write it on the side. x equals negative 26. Great answer, right? No. How are you going to have a negative answer in a picture? Eh, rejected. Come over here, add 10, add 10, x equals 10. Positive answer works perfectly in my picture. Thanks for watching. See ya.